So then guys, one of the big questions that you've been asking recently, what's the major differences between the M4 Pro Mac Mini and the M4 Max Mac Studio? Well, today I'm gonna to compare the differences mainly in benchmarks, but first of all, let's go over the main kind of differences in looks wise. Obviously the Mac Mini is far smaller than the Mac Studio. And obviously the other thing is the different kind of chips that you get inside of it. So for example, with the Mac Mini, you can get the M4 and the M4 Pro, and then the likes of the Mac Studio now, we get the M3 Ultra, and we've also got the M4 Max inside of it. One of the other key big differences is obviously the size. The Mac Mini is definitely smaller than the Mac Studio, but the Mac Studio does offer a lot more different kind of ports and extra ports too. And then obviously I would say, like what we're comparing today, the baseline version of the M4 Pro Mac Mini starts at $1,400 or $1,399 US dollars compared to $1,000. 999 US dollars, so $2,000 for the Mac Studio. So the big thing is then, what is the key differences then, next of all, in performance wise? Because I think this is the main thing that most of you will be probably buying, say an M4 Max over the likes of an M4 Pro, or wanting to know if the M4 Pro can still, you know, cut out the edge here and it's worth actually saving $600. So the first thing what I've actually done is a black magic disk speed test. And you can see here in this chart right here of what the differences are. So starting up with the Mac Mini M4 Pro, remember this is the baseline version, we're comparing the cheapest Mac Mini compared to the cheapest Mac Studio. So we got here read speeds of 5,170 compared to write speeds of 4,140. But you can see the difference here with the Mac Studio with the M4 Max, even though it's got the same amount of storage, we can see that the read speed is slightly ahead more than we got with the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro, but the write speed is definitely way faster here at 6,830. And just in case you want to know what's that like in a real life sort of test using the CPU and that's say the actual storage combined together, well, I unzipped a five gigabyte file. It's not the biggest of files, but I timed it, how long it would take to unzip it, and have a look at the chart right here. You can see that the Mac Mini M4 Pro, well, it unzipped it in 5.62 seconds, which was quite reasonable, but then obviously the Mac Studio with the M4 Max did it in 4.38 seconds. We are taking more than a second, almost a second and a half quicker to actually unzip this file, as you can see right here. But then the next big thing is all to do with the actual CPU. Now this is the thing, we've got the M4 Max inside of this, and it's the M4 Pro, and I'll say again, we are comparing the baseline versions here, because obviously that's what I want to do, the $1,400, and then also the $2,000, because funny enough, those are the most popular configurations. Now I know some of you guys out there in the comments are going to be going, why haven't you done the most highest spec one? Because not many people actually buy that configuration actually. Now I know there's going to be a few of you go, I buy it, but generally speaking, more you guys by the baseline version. So let's have a look then at the differences. And just for the fun of it, I've actually thrown in here M3 Ultra for the CPU, just for this test here, just to show you the major difference here in Geekbench. And we can see here with the Mac Mini M4 Pro, obviously single core performance is 3,826, and then obviously the M4 Max is 3,832, very similar. But obviously the Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra for single core is definitely slower because it is the previous generation. But what's most interesting is got to be the multi-core performance because personally what I'm seeing right here is that we're getting say 20,376 compared to 23,012. Remember this device is gonna cost us $600 more for this M4 Max over that baseline 12 core version. And then what's even more ridiculous is gonna cost you $2,600 more to have that baseline M3 Ultra at the bottom here, the 28 core version, what gives us 26,390. And to me, essentially, just to get 6,000 more score in the benchmark and paying $2,600 more, no. Not worth getting the M3 Ultra, definitely getting, say, this device right here, what is the M4 Pro, or even saying the M4 Max on that hand, because obviously, yeah, that is definitely faster too. But again, just going back to the chart here, it's only 3,000 more. It's not a lot more than what we got with the M4 Pro baseline. And yet, you'd have to spend $600 more for it. 
But then I've also done Cinebench 2 in single core and multi core. And let's have a look right here at the chart. And we can see them obviously, we've got 176 here. We just got the M4 Pro and the M4 Max game baseline at the end of the day. So yeah, we can see the actual difference here, 176, 176, but the multi-core performance, 1,433 to 1,654. It's just a bit of an increase there, what we've got with the M4 Max compared to the M4 Pro. But then moving on from this is graphics. Now this is where I think things are gonna start to change here because obviously, you know, we had additional two more cores in performance core of M4 Pro to M4 Max. That is the major difference we have here with the baseline versions. It's 12 cores in total to 14 cores in total. But when we go over to GPU side, things change completely here. We have 16 cores inside the M4 Pro baseline, but we have 32 cores in the M4 Max baseline inside of this device. So let's have a look. And first of all, let's do 3D Mark Nomad Light. And let's have a look then, see what we've got here in frames per second. And we can see that the Mac Mini M4 Pro with its 16 cores got 55.6 frames per second. was not that bad at all, to be honest, with this one. And then obviously with the Mac Studio M4 Max, remember it's got double the amount of cores, it gave us 83.2 frames per second. So obviously double the cores does not equal double the performance at all here. But it is quite interesting to see how close actually this is in between both of these. We are talking around about say 20 sort of seven more frames per second. So we are talking, I'd say, you know, around about sort of 50 percent more quicker here but you know that's the big difference that you're paying $600 more for I think the graphics is making a bigger sort of stab here in difference compared to what we had with CPU and to be honest this kind of continues on even when I decide to do Geekbench the GPU benchmark there have a look right here and we can see that the Mac mini M4 Pro with the 16 cores inside of that that gave us a score of 100,208 compared to 156,982 so again just over 50% sort of difference there. So very similar to like what we just got before. So that is making a difference, but obviously it's not making a 100% difference, obviously with having double the amount of cores, only about 50% difference. And then there's a couple more tests to do with graphics. I also decided to do Cinebench as well. So obviously this is the Cinebench sort of system sort of test, which checks out the GPU and you can see the scores right here. We have got here with the M4 Pro, we've got 7,828 compared to 10,412. So again, that kind of 50% sort of difference exists here too. And then finally, what I decided to do, I decided to do the Blender Benchmark Tool. It runs three different benchmarks and gives us an overall kind of average sort of score. And let's have a look then at the benchmark right here. We can see that the M4 Pro, well, with that one, it got 2,236, again, to 2,921 with the M4 Max. So in conclusion there, like I said already, we can see it's around about 50% difference what we're getting in here in sort of graphics kind of performance wise. Whether you want to shell out an extra sort of $600 for that, well, I think it depends obviously, and we'll get to this in the conclusion. But the next question that you guys want to know about is probably all to do with actual say video editing. And let's say if I was doing an export, you know, of a video, because one thing I will say, what we do have inside the M4 Pro is just one encoder and one decoder, a media one. Where Whereas with the M4 Max, we actually have two inside of it. So let's see if we have a difference here. If I decided to export a 12 minute video, or just under that, at 4K, and uh, we're using the actual Apple hardware sort of specs here. So we're actually using the actual media engines here. Let's have a look then to see what we got in score wise. Well, we can see the Mac Mini M4 Pro took 163 seconds, whereas the Mac Studio M4 Max took 86 seconds here. So yeah, there is a difference. Obviously those two encoders, decoders, does make a big difference because obviously that file can be split in half and it can be worked on together. So yeah, that does make a huge difference right here. And with that, that's all the tests. And I think in conclusion, what we can take away from this, if you are gonna be doing full on CPU tasks, so things that, you know, apps that are gonna utilize the main CPU processor, not the graphics, not the media engine, then I would be saying the M4 Pro is probably actually a better buy for you. Save yourself that $600 
hardwares. And I know some of you guys might be going, well, you get the extra ports and things like this, but there are hubs and adapters out there for your Mac Mini. So yeah, just be aware that you could do that instead. But if you're that desperate to have that, then obviously, yeah, you can buy the extra ports and things like that, what you get with the actual Mac Studio. And the other reason why I'd say I would actually personally go for the Mac Studio is because of those extra ports is a definitely a big thing and if you are a person who's going to be utilizing the graphics so much more than saying on an m4 pro then i would be getting this and then also i would also be adding in there as well for media if you can swallow up an extra 600 dollars to obviously make your videos when they're encoding and decoding to be double as quick almost then obviously i would be saying that the mac studio m4 max is definitely a fantastic buy there even the baseline version because at the end of the day even if you spec up the Mac Studio to the full on amount of cores and things like this, you still only get the same amount of media decoders. You know, you only get two inside of it. There's no differences whatsoever. And something else I just want to quickly point out here as well that the M4 Max is definitely a great buy out there. What you've got to remember is the MacBook Pro baseline version with the M4 Max starts at $3,200. So that is $1,200 just to have a screen built in. What is a good screen? I am going to say that. And obviously a keyboard too and things like this. But obviously you're going to be missing out on ports. And so if you want to have, say, just a desktop machine, I'd be definitely opting for this than actually you know going for the laptop. I know some people buy a laptop because of convenience. But I would really, really make sure that that is definitely going to be the right choice for you. You know, that you are going to port that around with you. And something else I'll just add in there is, obviously the fans inside the Mac Studio, if you do push out the M4 Max to its limit, this is going to cope so much better than with the MacBook Pro 14 inch or 16 inch. Just look how thick this is and obviously the fans inside of this do a fantastic job inside. So that is just something else to be aware of there. But let me know then guys, what do you think? Do you think the M4 Pro or the M4 Max is better value for you? Well, let me know in the comments below. And with that as well guys, it's time to wrap up this video too so if you've enjoyed watching it please do press the like button and also if you want to hear the latest app on news reviews and comparisons make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell too until next time guys i'll see you really soon take care bye bye